Minister, thanks for your time. Uh, a simple question, but a tough one to, to answer. Do you know or can you pinpoint elements in the system that led, invariably, sadly, to Luke's death? So thanks, Nick, and it's wonderful to be able to talk to you about this very, very important community issue. We have a, a dead child, we have a dead man, we have a grieving mother, and there are clearly uh, opportunities now to have a very good look at the system, how it worked, what happened in the police, what happened with the courts, so that we can identify uh, what happened and how and why and if there were things that should have happened differently to prevent this in the future. At the moment we don't have all of those details, that information is being gathered as we speak, um, but the investigations are underway and we'll have more information this week and in the weeks to come. Yeah, so there are a number of reviews going on. Do you, when realistically do you think those reviews will be finished and you can start, I mean I, I can imagine in your position you were just chomping at the bit to do something, so when will you actually be able to do something given you've got to let the reviews take their course? So already I know the police commissioner has sat down with the police minister and done a early assessment of the situation. Uh, he will be coming back and they will be meeting again this week and then I'll be sitting down with the police minister to assess the broader system as well as the police and the courts uh, and what happened there. The, child, uh, the children's commissioner, Bernie Geary, uh, will commence his investigation this week. Now that does take a little bit longer because there's a very thorough process we have to look at. Uh, not only our judicial system, but of course our child protection system, our mental health system, our school system, who else was around the family and who else knew what was going on and may have been able to see an opportunity to do something differently. So it will take some weeks and possibly even some months, but in the meantime there's things that we are already doing to address these issues. And let me give you one example. We are going to go through a process uh, now, starting this week, of looking at uh, intervention orders of individuals who have children known to child protection and make sure that they're safe and if there's anything else that should be happening. So we can get going making sure children are safe while these reviews happen simultaneously. A couple of ideas that have been thrown up. One is uh, bracelets or anklets around people who have intervention orders against them so they can be monitored. monitored. Is that feasible? So it is feasible. For example, we have done that. The Minister for Corrections has done that uh, with sex offenders who yeah. are on leave. We're looking at that in terms of people with disabilities who have uh, criminal records uh, and them getting leave and being able to monitor them. Uh, it is feasible to do it. The question is, is how far you go on that uh, in relation to, to who would be uh, crossing the bar to require those bracelets. But an intervention order, if you make it pretty clear, if you have an intervention order against you, we can monitor you with these anklets or bracelets. It, it seems pretty straightforward. Well, there's many, many thousands of intervention orders out yeah. there. Um, and so we are not at the stage yet where we would say that we would have thousands of people with these bracelets on at any one time. We have uh, already extended it from where it's been previously to people we know are high risk to the community, uh, where we know we need to monitor them closely. And so that's always things we can look at, um, but we do need to work out how far this goes, how far we move that bar. Uh, now, it, just to, to pick you up on what you said, you've already got a number of people with them. Are there a number of people already with intervention orders with them on, or is it just on sex offenders at the moment? It, it's just been on sex offenders, okay. uh, and uh, we're having a look at it for people with a disability who have a criminal justice record who yeah. are getting leave um, from uh, disability forensic facilities. The other frustration as well, and it, it's one of those basic tenets of government, isn't it, that the uh, magistrates and the judges have to be separate from the political wing, and that's the, that's the way it is. But the frustration for all of us as members of the community, and obviously for you as a parliamentarian as well, is two elements. One is that twice the police opposed bail for Greg Anderson, and twice a magistrate gave him bail. And secondly, something that Bernie Geary raised with us on the Sunday morning program yesterday, and that is a change in attitude of magistrates towards intervention order in, in, uh, in giving the kids the benefit of the doubt rather than, in most cases, the father the benefit of the doubt. What, is there anything as a parliamentarian or a politician you can do about changing those attitudes of the judiciary? Absolutely, and I think that the Parliament uh, sets that tone and the Coalition Government has taken a strong lead on this through the Attorney-General, Robert Clark. 
uh, we've put in new indictable offences for breaches of the family violence safety notices. We've tightened up bail laws so that if people breach their bail, they actually go to jail. They don't just get another bail episode and be back out in the community again. So these uh, areas have already been tightened, but we are always happy to look about how uh, that needs to go further, if it does. Um, but we need to get these new laws into place. They, they came into uh, effect in the second half of last year. We need to see the impact that they're having and uh, keep in terms of keeping women and children safe. And if they need to go further, then we'll look at that, absolutely. Uh, but, I mean, you must be frustrated more than anyone, just as I'm frustrated, just as our, our listeners are frustrated at the fact that this magistrate uh, actually, uh, I probably ignores too strong a word, it, it didn't take into consideration the police concerns about this man. Now, is there anything the government can do about that? So I can't comment on an individual <coughs> case, you'll understand. Yeah. Um, and the review will certainly have a look at the details of that decision making. Uh, the judicial officers need to have all the information at hand to take uh, into account when making their decisions, but we do need to have the focus on keeping the community safe, keeping women and children safe, and that is an absolute commitment of this government. Okay, now these increases in report of domestic violence, the police have said in the past it's more a case of uh, people reporting it rather than the actual domestic violence going up. Do you agree with that? I do. Uh, I think there is an <coughs> element of an increase, uh, and what we have been seeing as part of that is uh, re-reports, families that have violence occurring again and again, and we've actually got new initiatives in place to target those families, those recidivist behave, uh, men who are behaving and, and conducting violence again and again. But uh, most of the increase, I do believe, is women having the confidence that they can report it and that something will happen as a result. And I think that's really important. We need to look at both elements, those uh, perpetrators who are doing it again and again, but also encouraging women to have a say, to speak up and to say it's not acceptable as the broader community does.